If something is making you sad, scared, or worried, or if somebody's hurting you, we should tell a safe person. So we need to know what a safe person is. So who can tell me what a safe person is? Someone I trust. Somebody you trust, okay. What else? Yes. So what I, a little time out again. So what I will say is for when you're talking to kids about safe people, um, you want to make sure that they under, that we are using an adult as our measure. Um, so what I usually say to them is that we want to make sure that our safe people are grown-ups for this conversation. Because if somebody's hurting us or somebody's being hurt or somebody's going to hurt somebody else, we really need to be telling a grown-up because they have the ability to do what they need to do to help people be safe. So for our conversation today, our safe people have to be adults. So they're adults we trust. What else? How else do you describe a safe person? They help you. They, help you. Yeah. they, don't, hurt you. they don't hurt you. So a lot of times people will say mom or dad, my grandma, my family, a police officer. And here's the thing about safe people is that safe people are different for all of us, right? So for some of us, our mom might be a safe person. And for some of us, our mom might not be a safe person. And that is OK. So it's more of how they treat us, how they behave, than who the person, what their job or who that person is. So a safe person is somebody who's kind to us, who listens to us, who helps us, who doesn't hurt our bodies, who doesn't uh, ask us to do things that make us feel sad, scared, or worried, who doesn't call us names. Um, anything else you want to add to that list? You trust them. You trust them, yes. So this is what we're going to do. We're not going to do this, but I'm going to set it up for you in the interest of time. And this is another activity uh, that they will tell you they've done four million times, and that's okay. It, uh, they should do it again and again. You can use this piece of paper. You can do it on a plate. You can do it in another artistic way uh, if you are a creative thinker. Uh, I'm just really not. So this is our Safe People plate. So what you're going to do is you're in the middle. And on each ring, you're going to write a name of one safe person. So each ring, one name, and why that, is, that person is your safe person. So don't say mom because she's my mom. You're going to say mom because she protects me. Okay? And you're going to do as many rings as you can. So there's a couple things I want to make sure that you remember. First, person has to be a grown-up. Can't be your dog. I know your dog protects you, but your dog can't talk and can't tell somebody else that you need help. Can't be your baby brother or sister, or your big brother and sister unless they're a grown up. We really want to make sure that they are a grown up. And the other thing is, is that there's somebody inside your, in, 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 you, can, you can do somebody in your house, but we want to make sure that you do some people outside of your house as well, okay? So you're going to give them the sheet. They're going to do that. While they're doing that, you're going to walk around and make sure that they're actually doing this. Um, make sure that they're putting adults, make sure they're doing people inside, outside of school, I mean, outside of their house, and you might have to ask some questions, and that's okay. If you see that, no, that a child doesn't have anybody, you can say, oh, I noticed there's nobody on your plate. <laughs> you know, and they might say, I'm just not doing this. You know, very rarely, like once every 100 times, somebody will say, I don't have any safe people. Don't force them, say, you know, I'm sorry that, that you feel like you don't have any safe people. You know, maybe after we talk some more, somebody might come to your mind, or maybe, you know, um, you, know you can offer yourself, uh, you know, you know I, I know you don't feel this way, but I am a safe person. I'm here to help you and listen to you. And, you know, just leave it at that. You're not going to force kids to write things down, but that rarely happens. It's usually, I don't want to do this. And, you know, and that's a whole other can of worms for you not to really dive into. Uh, but still in fourth and fifth grade, they're willing to write people down because they're supposed to. So um, while they're doing it, the other thing I tell them is, so you know, while we're doing this, you focus on your plate. Don't be worried about your neighbor's plate. So remember, I said that you decide who your safe person is. So if you don't have mom or dad or you don't have grandma or grandpa down, that is OK. And if your friend doesn't have mom or down dad, mom or down dad, that is OK. You are working on you and who your safe people are, and you figure that out for you. Okay. All right. So then they would do that. What I usually have them do is just share one person that they wrote on their plate and why. 
I don't, again, I don't, if you've walked around and you see everybody has somebody, I don't force a child to do that. Some people just don't like to be public speakers and they don't want to share. It's probably less of an issue in your groups, but uh, as long as they have somebody written down, I just say, would you like to share? Sometimes they say no, sometimes they say yes, and, and just one person and why, because also sometimes this could take 45 minutes because they want to tell everybody in the world. So remind them one person, one reason why, and moving on. Okay, um, so you have just done the safe plates with them. And so what you will say is okay. So you will give everyone uh, this sheet. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna tell you a little story. And at different parts of the story, I'm gonna ask you to fill out your sheet with some of your thoughts. So let's pretend that on my safe people plate is my karate teacher. And I put him on my safe people plate because he's really kind, he's really nice to me, he has been my karate teacher for three years, he's really helpful to my family, um, he's, um, he's let me take some lessons for free, he brings me home sometimes when my mom has to work late, and um, he's even been invited to some of our birthday parties. So he's a really great person. So I put him on my list. Um, so the other day we were together and he says, oh, I got something for you. And he gives me a gift card. And this is like the fifth gift card he's given me. And he says that these are, you know, because I'm doing such a great job. I'm a superstar. I'm like his best karate student. And this is because I'm doing so well that he, he gives them to me. And he doesn't give them to anybody else, just me, because I'm so great. But he said that I really shouldn't tell my growing up because, you know, she'd be upset that he was giving me money and, he, and she would make me give him back to him. So I, I should, not, should not tell um, my growing up. So I did it. I'm just keeping my gift cards and I'm going to get some cool things. And you know, sometimes when he drives me home, he lets me play on his phone. And you know, my mom won't let me have TikTok or Instagram or Snapchat. And he lets me look at all those things. And I can see all the cool TikToks. So I know what my friends are talking about at school. And that's really great. And he's so cool. And he just knows about everything. Um, but he's always telling me, you know, not to let my mom know that he's letting me see the TikToks and the things that I'm not supposed to be doing. And then yesterday when he dropped me off, he showed me this really weird picture that was on a t like he said it was on a TikTok, but I wasn't sure, but I just didn't like the picture. It was weird. Um, but that's okay. All right, so we're going to stop here. So now I want you to look at your handout. And I want you to think about if listening to my story... If you were me, the first bubble says, how would you feel? So I want you to write down how would you feel if these great things or these things were happening to you. And then the next one says, is my karate teacher being a safe person? So what you think, yes or no, and then why you think that. And then what you think should be done, if anything. So you'll let them take a couple minutes to really think about that and fill that out and just walk around to try to encourage them to do that because some of them might not want to write that stuff down. And it's fine if they don't, um, but you want to obviously talk about it. So let's have a conversation about this now. So how many of you, how are you guys feeling right now about my karate teacher? So how many of you said he's being a safe person? Raise your hand. How many of you said he wasn't being a safe person? All right. So why is he being a safe person? Because he's really being good to us. He's yeah. taking care of us. Yeah, he's, he's being awesome. Right place to it. That's absolutely right. He's being awesome. I think he's great. You know, I get to do all sorts of fun things. He gives me money. Who cares about the weird picture? Now, how many, so for those of you who said he's not being safe, what was that about? I thought he was being a safe person until he showed me that weird picture, and then it kind of, my uh-oh went off. So your uh-oh feeling went off about that safe, about the picture? He also said to keep a secret. Oh, right, so he did say to keep a secret. I shouldn't tell my growing up, right? Anyone else? All right. So, for those of you who say he's a safe person, are you going to do anything? Which you guys? Are you going to do anything different? <laughs> I don't know. Pay attention to what he says or not. Okay, yeah, so you're going to pay attention. Pay attention. Okay. And for you guys who said he's not a safe person, what are you going to do? Tell someone. Tell someone? Okay. So, for us as 
the presenters, just let that conversation happen organically. Um, you're probably going to get more kids. I thought you all would, would say he's great. He's not a safe person, but you will probably get more kids who say he's fine. Like, this is totally fine. He is being a great person. And just let them sit with that and be okay with that. And then continue on. So, okay, great job. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this person. So yesterday, um, when he, we were after class, he's like, Kelly, come over here. I want to tell you something. And he's like, I am so excited. There is this going to be this tournament in Florida, and I can only bring my most spectacular star, and that's going to be you. So you and I are going to go to Florida, just you and me. What do you think? Oh, that's exciting, isn't it? And so he was, I was so excited, he was so excited that he kissed me. <laughs> All right, so now I want you to fill out the rest of the bubble. So how are you feeling now with that next the thing that happened yesterday? Is he being a safe person, and what should you do? Right. So make sure, just as a side note, you let them fill, write it again. You want them to write it down because you want that, that thought process. Um, and then what I would do, again, in the interest of time, is use your whiteboard or write on a piece of paper. Um, basically, what we're going to do is the red flags next. So. so sometimes you will get, well, that's not going to happen to me because I'm a boy. Um, and then, so you just let them know. <laughs> That I, you know, I, that's a really good point. I understand what you're saying, but boys are sexually abused too. Um, there, this, this could be any of you. So even though the karate coach, is, uh, the karate teacher is a man, it could still happen to boys. You can say, I know that there are boys who have been sexually abused. Um, you can leave it at that. You can say sometimes boys don't like to tell that they were sexually abused by another man or another boy because they're embarrassed. Um, and, but that's important that they still tell to sort of give that message as well. Um, and then what I will typically do at the end is just say that this could be anybody. It doesn't have to be your karate coach. It could be a girl. It could be a boy. It could be anybody. Um, we just use this as an example to hit all, to try to hit those points as best we can. So how are we feeling about, about my karate coach now? Have we changed our, our minds? So do we have an uh-oh feeling now? Do more of us have an uh-oh feeling? So let's list all the things that are giving us an uh-oh feeling. So I would write these down. So this is something they could do in a group, or you can just write them down. Actually, I would do this as a large group to make sure you're not, things aren't being said that you can't monitor. So what are some things you're worried about now or that are giving you that uh-oh feeling? So we kissed you, right? So that was an uh-oh feeling. Now, you might get, so again, time out. You might get some kids who are like, if he's been to your birthday party, he's like my family, why wouldn't he kiss me, right? So you just say, that's a really good point, so let's hold on to that for one second if they start with the kiss. So what's next? Just the tournament, just the two of them, right? That should be other people should be invited. Your parents should be invited. Other kids should come to the tournament, so that's a concern. What's another concern? Or something else that gave you an uh-oh feeling? Don't tell your safe grown up, right? That is a big red flag. When gr somebody tells you not to tell, to keep secrets from your safe grown up, your grown up at home, that is something that you really have to pay attention to and is most likely something that you need to tell a safe grown up. And what was the other thing? Well, there's two other things. What are the two other things? He showed you a picture that made you feel uncomfortable, and he gives you gift cards for no reason. So it is really great to get gifts, but if you are the only person getting a gift for no reason, it's not your birthday, you weren't the first to get a brown belt, just randomly and no reason, and that he's telling you to keep it from your safe grown up, those are all things that need to be told. So when we look at our list, there's a lot of things here that, should make, that will make our uh -oh feelings go off. And when we have all of these things together, then that's what means that we make sure that we need to tell. And the big uh-oh thing to pay to remember is he gave you something and he let you do something then he told you not to tell your grown-ups. He wanted you to keep that a secret from your grown-ups. Safe grown-ups don't do that. So that helps with the kiss thing because sometimes that's normalized. 
and it's sort of all of these things together should, you know, are very, are, and I, I say all of these things together are very concerning. This, the Ukrai teacher is not being a safe person. This is not okay. And we need to be able to say that. Now, I will tell you this. Um, at one of these trainings, <laughs> I don't remember which one and where I was, but somebody came up to me and said that this happened in their community, this exact thing. So if this, it, it, you can change, it could be the soccer coach, the teacher, it could be anybody who, is, uh, but you know, somebody like that, if it's a little too close to home, but you wanna use this scenario to help them. So basically what you're doing without saying it is teaching them the grooming process. And we want them to be aware of the red flags and the importance of telling a safe grown up. All right, so let's say now your uh oh feeling is going off and you know you've thought about this and you're really concerned and you're going to tell a safe grown up. What would you say? Because it's really hard to tell when something scary is happening. So we got to practice that. So what would you say? Okay, so yes. So you might tell your grown-up the safe, you might say, tell your safe grown-up the karate teacher kissed me, okay? And that safe person might say, really? Why? <laughs> They're taking you to Florida. They're taking you to Florida, really? Why? Because I'm the best karate player. Oh, okay. All right, do I need to sign a permission form? You didn't say so. Okay. What else might you say? Oh, he showed you a real picture. So tell me more about that picture. You don't have to. But that's the question, you know. Now, I will tell you. So you want to, you want to demonstrate how, to, how a safe person should respond. And there's, like, some little helpful hints here. Open-ended questions, those kinds of things. You're not usually going to get a lot of detail because they're fourth and fifth graders and it's in a group. Uh, but you just really want them to start thinking about what they should say and then you want to tell them, you know, you want to be as specific as possible. So you want to tell them all of this information because it's going to help them make a decision about what to do. So if you only say, oh, he showed me a weird picture and you don't tell them anything else about that weird picture, they might not be able to do what they need to do with that information. So as hard as it is, you want to make sure that you tell them everything that happened and give them as much information as you can so they can make a good choice and a good decision to help you be safe. Because if your uh-oh feeling is going off, it's probably for a good reason. Um, so <clears throat> one of the things that we're going to go back to our, to our safe people plate is here's what happens with our safe people plate. So you may have done this activity a couple of times. You might do it again, or you might say, you will do this again next year. And what you might find is that the people on your safe people plate will change. Now, sometimes that your safe people change because you just don't get to see them anymore. So maybe you put your fourth grade teacher on your list, but you're going to go to a different school in fifth grade, and you're not going to see your fourth grade teacher, so you take that person off your list. It's not because that person is bad or not a safe person. It's just because you don't have access to them anymore. Or you sometimes have to take safe people off, like our karate teacher. So would we take the karate teacher off your safe person list? Yes, because unfortunately sometimes people start off as our safe people and they're kind to us and they take care of us and they protect us and they give us things, but then they do some things that are dangerous and hurtful and they become unsafe people. So they need to come off your safe people list, but most importantly, you need to make sure that you tell somebody else on your list about that person. That's why we have so many rings, so that if somebody becomes unsafe, you have somebody else that you can tell. Now, there is one other piece of information that I want to make sure you're aware of. Every once in a while, something happens, and you, and, 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 uh, and you become brave enough to tell, because it is a, you have to be brave to tell these things. And you tell your safe person on your list, you know, the karate teacher kissed me, and he gave me gift cards, and um, he shows me weird pictures. And some, you're one, somebody on your list might say, oh, okay, thanks for telling me, and not do anything about it. Or they might say, oh, he's just being a nice guy. Don't, 
he, don't worry about it. Now, if somebody said to you, oh, he's being a nice guy, don't worry about it, what? Do you think your uh-oh feeling might go off again? Right? Because your uh-oh feeling is telling you, right? So sometimes people, our grown-ups, don't always know what to do. And they don't always give you the right answer. So what's really important is that you get that courage again, and you're brave, and you tell somebody else on your safe people place. You have to keep telling until somebody gets you the help that you need so, you, so your uh-oh feeling stops. Because remember, that's your alarm system saying, danger, danger, danger. Okay? Any questions about that? So you definitely want to make sure you give them the opportunity to ask some questions about that. That's sometimes real hard for... And that's why you want to make sure that you do this again. For, you want to do that piece, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th, so they can sort of hear that concept over and over again. All right, so then um, you will simply wrap up <laughs> the lesson um, with some review. If you look on page 17 and 18, um, so you want to highlight what I, you know, that sometimes grown-ups always don't know what to do. Sometimes kids ask me, and I, this is part, you, you say this to them, you know, sometimes kids ask me, why would somebody hurt, why would a grown-up hurt a child? And, you know, and that's a really hard question. And just like I said with your safe person who wasn't able to get you the help, is that some, the grown-ups don't always know what to do. They don't always know what's right from wrong. And so sometimes they make choices that are, are, are bad and that they need help just like, like other folks do. So sometimes our grown-ups hurt us because they just don't know what's right and that they need help. And so when you are telling another safe grown-up about what happens to you, you're getting that grown-up some help so they can make better choices. Oh, that's my question. All right. Um, so we're going to uh, wrap up and we're going to talk about how this connects to our faith. Um, so as we talked about, our bodies are gifts from God um, and that they are the temples of the Holy Spirit and we must uh, keep, we must respect them and keep our bodies safe. We talked about how God gave, gave us feelings so we can help experience our world, but that also is another way, another gift to help us remain safe when we get those uh, feelings. Um, and that God never wants us to be hurt. And if somebody's hurting us, it's really important that you tell. And so to remember that you want to tell a safe person if anybody's being hurt. So if you're being hurt, if somebody else is being hurt, if you feel like you might hurt yourself or somebody else, it's really important that you tell a safe grown-up and get the help that you need. All right. Any questions? And then you would end with your closing prayer, which is also in your scripts. All right, so we're going to stop with the lesson, and I want to just... Are there any questions about anything that we've done? Yes. The lesson, what you just went through. Yes. Where is your recommended cutoff of 45? So I know people like that, and I just tell you, people don't like my answer. Just do what you can. Because if you say, if I say, oh, you should stop after secrets, well, you might be able to get through that in 30 minutes. Um, or it might take you longer because there's a lot of questions about that you're comfortable asking about child abuse. So I, when you practice, you know, you can sort of get a feel for how long things will take you. It's going to vary by, um, you know, what your kids are asking. But you just end when you're done is, is, is and I know people don't like that answer. But because I don't want you not to have important conversation or answer questions because you're so worried. Now, you do have to sort of say to yourself, well, I need to be at least to secrets <laughs> by the time I'm done with the first session um, so that I have enough time to do the end. Because this last piece is really important to do with them. Um, and so, you know, it's making sure they understand the four types of child abuse. By the time they've been to fourth and fifth grade, they should really have had this enough to know they have four private places, what they are the difference between good and bad secret touches and um, the secrets and surprises. So you can sort of button them up a little bit faster just to make sure that you spend it, because you really want the application piece. You want them to like understand the grooming process and talk about telling and that kind of stuff. Um, and so, and because there's no scenario, there's no difference between fourth and fifth grade, you might at least change who it is in fifth grade, but then you might have more time 
to spend on that in fifth grade than you did in fourth grade. So you, you do have, and I, I, you know, people hate this, I want it to be this way, and I'm sorry. But I do, it's important that you are where your children are because if you're rushing through, you might miss some important things. One of the things that, uh, one of the tips that I'm gonna give you that I didn't do for myself was to write an outline. Because if you, because what, happens, what happened to me today is that the way we do it is slightly different. The order of the way we present stuff is different than the way that we put it for you guys. And so I was confusing the order. Um, and I was trying very hard to stick to your script. Uh, but if you're doing these different, if you're doing all the lessons, that's going to happen to you. And you're going to feel like, oh, I said that already. <laughs> so sometimes having that outline will help stay on track. And then so if you decide to do the safe people, plate a little bit earlier. I mean, you could really introduce that anywhere because we talk about safe people all the time. You could do that first if you really wanted to for your fourth and fifth graders because they'll already have had that basics coming along. So, because um, those are two really interactive um, activities, so sure. The order is not as uh, important as just making sure that you're getting the messages across and you're whatever those whatever order that they are in that they're sticking to pretty much what's in here and in any of the activities you can vary to make them more interactive so let's do tips and then um, we'll talk a little bit more okay so before your very first session um, you want to review the scripts obviously um, and, and make some notes. Hopefully you did that today while we were talking. Um, some things either, you know, that stood out for you or you want to make sure that you highlight. I said practice, practice, practice. Practice is really important. Um, and then uh, you can create an outline, as I said, to sort of help you keep on track. Um, this is an example of the outline for the fourth and fifth grade. The other thing you can do, but again, I just caution, is you could make a PowerPoint. You know, you could just take pieces from the script and put it in the PowerPoint, but don't just use that as a, okay, introduction to topic based on our faith. You know, like, don't use that as another thing just to read from. You know, use that as a way to keep you on target and to make it visually appealing to, to the kids, but it can't just be a substitute script. You know what I'm saying? Um, but a PowerPoint is perfectly fine just to help everyone stay on, on topic. I make, sometimes when I do PowerPoints, I put things that I, I know that I struggle remembering on the PowerPoint or at least pieces of it, so I make sure that I say it. Um, but again, not too much of that because you'll, you'll lose the kids if you focus too much on a PowerPoint. Um, so we've already talked about a lot of these. Uh, be engaging. You want to make sure the best that you can create that open environment. And so, you know, we, uh, there's a little conversation about when should you do these lessons. And I obviously don't think you should do it <laughs> the, first, the first day or the last day. Um, ideally in the middle. So if these are new folks, you have a relationship with them and have already created that comfort level. And then it gives you some time to follow up if um, something, if kids have tr questions or concerns. Please do not do it on the last day because... <laughs> That's not going to go well. Either way, you're going to have a kid who's going to disclose to you, or you're sending a child home with maybe some questions that they have no one to answer them for. So, middle is best. Um, we talked about disruptive behavior. You want to make sure that you do the activities. I have seen people, you know, just feel like all I need to do is give them this information. I just want to get this over with. We're not doing any activities. And you're just not going to keep kids engaged if you're not doing activities and making it a conversation. And I know that that's intimidating because you never know what somebody's going to say. Like, I get that. <laughs> and you have to be okay with sometimes saying, you know what, that's a great question. And I don't really have a good answer. Let me get that answer for you. It's okay not to have all the answers. I really think that is an amazing strength to demonstrate to children that it's okay not to know all the answers. Um, and then to follow, obviously follow through and try to get the answer for them. It's, I think that is just a wonderful model. So don't feel like you need to have all the answers. Don't be afraid of questions. You know, just be willing to try to get those answers for them. And like I said, my card, always here to help. <laughs> 
um, and, and make it fun as much as you can. So if you go through the curriculum and you can think of a creative activity to do, um, do it, you know, whatever you think, you know, you know your groups, um, what would work with them, you know, maybe they can do a little bit more in groups, in smaller groups, maybe they can't, because um, you run the risk of not hearing what they're saying to each other in small groups. So we're gonna, if there's no more questions about the curriculum or anything we've talked about thus far. All right, then we're gonna kind of switch over to thinking about how to train the trainer. If you are gonna take this back and share it with anybody else, you are welcome to do it in this kind of forum. Uh, there, the PowerPoint I think is also on the website um, for you to use, which I'm gonna switch over to in just a second. But um, you really need a little credibility when you're training somebody else. I think you probably know that for yourself. If I came up here and said, I've never done this before, you would not take me seriously or listen to me, right? And so, or not have faith in what I'm telling you. So you do wanna make sure you've done the lessons before you take that back, or you present this in, we're gonna learn to do this together kind of situation. Um, but you, you, if you, best practice is you've done the lessons, you have some comfort with them before you train others. Um, and you're gonna see in the PowerPoint, I do have the, I have the walk arounds, I have the conversation about fears and concerns. Um, you should demonstrate the lesson just like I did and you should encourage the role plays. Um, these are important points and I'm gonna tell you about the, the, the fears and concerns were really important when we first, the first round or two, when this first came to, this change was implemented, um, there was lots of fears and concerns. These, these, these looked very different. Um, and so I think with people coming back and have already done it, done it and used it as a refresher and talking to people, the, the tide has changed a little bit, but if you're taking this back you to other folks, you do really need to give people the opportunity to tell you what they're worried about and what their concerns are and how they're feeling about having to implement it. Uh, that honesty is just gonna help you be more successful. Um, and hopefully some of the things that we talked about today, you can share with them if they have some concerns. I think you all hit about, hit, hit most of the concerns we hear. One thing that you guys didn't talk about was what if the parents you know, are complain or have concerns. Um, as I said, that should be dwindling because it's mandated in this, for Delaware, it's mandated in Delaware and their children are getting it in schools, any, in the public schools. Um, and you can just, you know, explain the reasoning behind it, why, you know, the statistics and use that kind of um, information to help parents feel more okay with it and then make the decision about so it is important that you do the programs with fidelity um, because sometimes when people, you know, add some things, they go places you just didn't even think they were going to go. You know, you think you found this great video on YouTube and you show it to them and no, nobody else has tested it out and there you are showing your video and you get a question or a response you just have no, you know, it sometimes opens a can of worms that you can't put back in. Um, you know, I have said you know, lots and lots of times, if there is something that you are struggling with or you, you, you found this video and you're like, this is the best thing I have ever seen, <laughs> you know, you could, you could bring it to Colleen. I'd be happy to, to look at it, just to try to help. If, if, if everybody agrees, you know, we can do some, some of that kind of work, but it's it, you just really want to stick to the script because what we've put in here as we've been doing for 30 years I can pretty much predict what your kind of responses you're going to get what questions you're going to get you know you know there's always these weird not weird these unusual outliers but generally speaking um, this will put you on a path that's fairly and I use this word generally safe <laughs> um, you can, like we said, you can change if you feel like I want to do the safe people activity the first session and use that, that's fine. If you want to, uh, you know, for secrets and surprises, if you want to uh, put them on cards and, you know, uh, and, um, or the boundaries, you have a lot, you know, the boundaries, you can put the scenarios on cards and ask them 
Is the boundary being violated? And if so, what would you do? They can do that in small groups and then report back to the large group. So you can make those variations, but you really want to stick to what is the script says, and that's going to lead you to th for the best results. Um, and like I said, any concerns or sh like, and I will say this, you should really, 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 really stick to the definitions that we use for child abuse. They're age appropriate and child friendly uh, and do not cause concern or alarm for children. If you start giving too many examples or varying off the path that's not there, you could go to a place you don't want to be at, uh, both from questions from children and responses from parents. So if, <laughs> if you're one of those people who are thinking to yourself, mm -mm, I, I'm not, I, I can do this better, that's fine. Do not, do not change the, the abuse, do not. Because that is where you're gonna get the most concerns, both from kids and, and parents. So memorize, use those definitions, put them on slides, whatever you have to do, don't vary from them at all. And do do them, because it's very important. Other questions? All right, uh, okay, so when we're training folks, right, um, expect enthusiasm because how you start your training, if you've trained anybody you know, if you're scared, they're scared. <laughs> they pick up, you know, on you. If you're not excited, if you're like, look, we have to do this, so we're just going to do it. That sets the tone. That's the, I'm painting the, the, sail, the, the jail cell bars instead of the, the beautiful landscape. You want to set the tone as, uh, enthusiasm because you know you know you we all know this is important it's just some maybe a little comfortable for us to share but you should expect resistance and be open to that the more honest you are the better results you're gonna get um, we've talked about don't deviate stay on purpose and encourage questions and participation because um, again open conversation helps your folks feel more comfortable, and then they'll do the same thing with kids, and that's, you know, you, this is a dialogue, this is not a lecture. So this uh, presentation is, uh, actually, I updated a little bit, so I will send that to Colleen, as, I, as available on uh, the website where the scripts are. Um, I don't have this in your handout, but you have the slides in your handout if you want to take uh, notes, but there is some speaker notes avail with the PowerPoint that's online. Um, I, I did what you are not supposed to do for this PowerPoint and put a lot of information on the slides to help you. Um, so you can divide them up and make them more visually appealing, but there is a lot of information so that you would not have to rely on the speaker notes if you chose to implement this. Uh, so you're going to do the same thing, or I would suggest you do the same thing. You do introductions, you walk around. The, there's actually four questions you can choose to do all four, just use these three um, if you do this. And I think it's just a good way to get people comfortable and talking and sharing. And even if you only have three people, do it on a little piece of paper uh, at a table just to sort of get those, that conversation started. Um, explain uh, where the curriculum, how, the, how it came about. And again, any questions, just feel free to ask me or uh, um, Colleen, you can certainly read the script. If you could just talk a little bit about my organization, I would greatly appreciate that. But most importantly, letting people understand that the, the, the collaboration between, the, between my organization um, and the diocese was thoughtful and careful, and there is expertise behind what was produced. Uh, I kept in some slides of, um, you know, funny cartoons about change, but again, you know the folks you would be teaching and working with if they're appropriate to keep in or not. Um, there is the piece about the fears and concerns. I like to do things just conversationally. If that's not your style, you, and maybe you would like folks to write their concerns down or put them, you do, do that as a walk around, you can do that. Um, but just make sure that you have that conversation. There's the slides about the programs and the statistics, which I, you know, I, I, I can ask you guys, did you feel like that was helpful information? Yeah. And I, do, I think most people feel like it just sort of gives some perspective on the topic and uh, about the research. And so um, 
I think it's just helpful for people's comfort. So it's the same slides, same exact slides that I did with you guys. Um, if, like I said, if you want to, where the research came from, you just let me know and I can get that information for you. Um, this is best practice, so these are the things that you want to stress, just like we've been stressing today. Um, you want to educate as many people as you can, so not just the children, but if the parents are available or you want to have a session with parents, that's important. Uh, we talked about if you can divide the sessions up into two sessions, that's best practice. Um, that you're going to see that they're repetitive, and that is on purpose, and I think that's important to share with other folks it's a critic, you know, it's an easy criticism. Oh my gosh, it's the same thing over and over again, but that's exactly purposeful. I always refer back to Dora. How many times did Map tell Dora how to get to the Red Barn? Three. There's a reason for that. That was just not a number Dora made up. Um, and really encourage activities and role playing because that's how the children learn best. I mean, that's based on research, the role playing piece. Do the same thing that we talked about, encouraging them to make it fun. It does not, it is a serious topic that doesn't have to be just, you know, uh, de delivered in a serious way. It can be fun and you can have a good time um, and make it comfortable for kids to talk. So you do really want to help folks understand how to respond to disclosures. You um, do want to do this slide. It, if you want to read all the bullets and that's how you want to do it, that's fine, but you, it is really important that the message they hear is not to ask interrogating or closed-ended questions. You want to keep your questions, what happened, tell me more about that, you know, very high level. Once you have um, information like enough to cause suspicion, typically though, when kids disclose, they disclose to you like you're, they're telling you about the weather. There is very little emotion, and that makes some adults think, oh, they're lying, because I'm sorry, if somebody did that to me, I'd be bawling my eyes out. And that's not usually the case, usually uh, because, you know, you kids don't usually tell about being abused right away. They've kept it with them for a while, and so it's, I always tell people, it's compartmentalized. The emotional piece is gone because if kids are emotionally reliving the abuse over and over again, they're going to go literally crazy. Like, so they have to put that emotional piece away. And so when they talk about it, they talk about it very, I've heard incredible stories. Like I am just telling you that this is a red chair and that's a white tablecloth, very monotone, very, um, like it's not a big deal. And so just because that's how they present to you does not mean that is not true. It's just how they've had to process and live with the abuse that they're experiencing. Um, it was great that you were able to have a conversation with them about their concerns, about why they wouldn't want to tell, but to reminding them that we need to tell to get them uh, the help that they need. And one of the things that you will hear, and if you have any opportunity to talk with parents or caregivers about this topic, kids often disclose abuse to somebody outside of their family. And the reason they do that is not because they don't trust their non-offending parent if it's the other parent or um, they don't think they'll help them. It's they're trying to protect them. And that's what parent, non-offending parents in particular need to hear is that they are, your children didn't tell you because they're trying to protect you, not because they didn't want to. Because that is the first, why didn't they tell me? And you know, right or wrong, they focus on themselves <laughs> first. And that is hard because a lot of folks want to believe that their kids will tell them anything. And abuse is one of those situations where kids are so protective of adults that they will be very thoughtful about who they choose to tell. So again, for your comfort level, if you're giving this information to somebody else, you might want to keep it high level so that you don't get these questions. I will also say, uh, again, happy to help any way I can. There is, again, in Delaware, I just am not as familiar with Maryland. If you go to the Office of the Child Advocates website, so the handout that I gave you, they have mandatory reporting training for general folks. You can take that yourself. You can refer that to the other folks in your parish just to give them more information about rep reporting the protocol and what they're required to do. 
So Office of Child Advocate, that handout is awesome. They also have some training on their website that you can refer folks to around this topic. Uh, go over how to make the report. <coughs> if you have the power invested in you to make people take the training online, it's just going to make them stronger. Um, then we can, you can talk a little bit about incorporating faith. I just realized I'm probably always in your way. Um, and where that is and how, that's in, how that is uh, put into the curriculum. And talk a little bit about the opening prayer and the closing prayer and the two options that are available. Uh, go over the curriculum like I did. Make sure that you have a plan about how you're getting that information to the parents. Um, and then what's included in the scripts. And then again, this is a sample. I did the same thing. They're, um, they're all in here. I don't know that you need to go through them all with your folks. You can take these slides out or just rush through them like I did. Uh, you just want to highlight what you're focusing on, your, the main points of talking about feelings, um, the differences between um, the, the, three, the three kinds of touches, good and bad secret, or secrets and surprises, uh, what a safe person is, and the safety rules are for everybody, and then third and up, four, sorry, fourth and up, get the child abuse and the boundary pieces. All right, common topics, and you should sort of do what I did and go through the common topics as part of your talk with them. Um, the information's on the slide. Try not to read it, but it will give you how to, you know, what you want to convey to your folks. Um, same thing with the private places and the touches. And I think I have that slide. So you have this information. Again, don't read the slide, but it gives you the information that you want to share. Um, the whole piecing, a piece about deciding who gets touches, uh, who, sorry, about what is a good touch and a bad touch for folks, how you, um, how touches change. You want to reiterate that before you do your demonstration so they, so folks hear that a couple of times because that might not be how everybody thinks about touches. Then a little bit about secret touches and then the four types of child abuse. So in this slide, in this handout, I have each type of abuse and their definitions on a slide. So for your reference, um, if you are most comfortable, you can feel free to read these slides <laughs> and have conversation around them so that, making, so that you're clear about what the definitions are that you're sharing with the folks that you're uh, talking to. So there's each kind of abuse is listed do you want me to go through any of the types of abuse? One more time. Any questions about the definitions? Um, OK, so this was the reminder piece, the two reasons um, that someone can touch your private places, reminding folks that anybody can sexually abuse them. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, that it's not just grown-ups that sometimes older kids touch other kids uh, in, in ways that are not appropriate. They just need to hear that. Um, something that you should really be telling adults as well because adults do not think about kids as being sexually abusive. And unfortunately, 40% of sexual abuse is committed by children. So reviewing the never ever rules with folks and then you do the script demonstration. Uh, I suggest you do fourth and fifth grade um, so that you are demonstrating how to talk about the different kinds of abuse. So that's why you need to have run through it a few times so that you're comfortable doing it in front of the folks who you want to also provide the lessons. Um, I left this in here. We did this the very first time that we did this training and it was sort of, it was designed to give folks an opportunity to practice. When you are trying, you know, practice makes perfect. So the way that this would be done is you would assign a particular activity to a group of folks. They would talk amongst themselves, prepare it, and then present that activity to the large group. That takes a lot of time. Um, but if you're working with a small group, that could just be something that you do, uh, you know, to help people maybe more than 
yeah, not, not on a regular basis, but a couple of times, you know, tonight we'll do this activity, tomorrow night we'll do this activity, or next time to sort of get them ready and, and practicing. Um, so that's just an option. They don't have to do it. And it's the same thing I told uh, that we talked about, helping them prepare before they do their first session to make sure that they review the scripts, that they're comfortable, make any notes that they need to make to practice, practice, practice. I can't say that enough. If you don't practice, it's, it's, it's a terrible snowball, right? If you go unprepared for something and you don't do very well on it, at it, it sort of snowballs into I can't do this and gets, just gets worse. So you want to be as prepared as you can. Uh, I think an outline is really important, or like I said, create a PowerPoint. I would suggest, though, that if you are the person in charge of this, um, that you create the PowerPoint for other folks in your parish to use so that you have some control over that. Uh, there's a sample outline, tips for delivery, same tips I gave you. I like the bubbles, makes them feel happy. And, <laughs> and then, and make sure you leave time for questions. And, and you know, I know I've said this a million times, but you are always welcome to reach out to me and I can, if I can't help you, I got somebody else on my team who can certainly help you um, implement these or answer any questions or concerns that you have. Mm -hmm.